Hello there, I'm Hitavi, and this video is my journey as a Coahuila Ceratops in Bisa Bermuda. Now, as many of you may know, it's been about a year and a half since I've played Bisa Bermuda, so there's a lot of new things that I need to get used to. And one new feature is these random abandoned eggs that just spawn around the map, which is really nice to see. It's really convenient for solo players, so of course, I took one and started my journey as a solo Koa. After a little bit of waiting, I finally hatched, and then I fiddled around with my skin for a little while, and then swim across the ocean over to the desert. Before I continued playing, Playing, though, I realized that I could actually just import skins I already had onto this koa instead of having to make do with, with what few colors I actually got when I hatched. So I made this skin in a deathmatch server, which is based off of this Spiclepius figure from Beasts of the Mesozoic. Personally, I actually think it came out pretty good. Also, just a little note in case you're wondering why my skin will probably be looking different in most of the clips, it's because I am currently playing on the lowest possible settings with really low resolution. Don't worry, I'm going to be getting a new graphics card very soon, so I shouldn't have to play on lowest settings anymore. But for the time being, it's going to look like trash. Once I was in the desert, though, I learned about blessings and how you could actually use blessings from the speed shrine in order to gain extra growth. 50% extra growth to be exact, which was very cool. It did come at a cost though. Your food and water would drain significantly faster. Right now though that's not an issue since I'm still not even 1.0, but in the future this may be a problem. So using these blessings I actually managed to grow up pretty quick. They also greatly increase the speed at which creatures grow. For example it would really only take a couple hours to get up to like 1.7 as a koa, when previously that probably would have taken somewhere between like 30 to 50 hours, so they've significantly increased growth, which is really nice. After not even that long, I hit 1.2 and I actually got some pretty good inherits on this koa, which is the reason I honestly kept going with it. Originally I just took this egg because why not, but I actually was really happy with the inherits. Most of all the plus 2 thick hide and plus 1 constitution combination, that's really good. Things don't stay peaceful forever though. Right after I had logged in, I saw an Apato login in front of me, so I decided to go over and say hi. But when he started charging at me, I quickly realized what was going on, and then tried to run in the other direction, and then realized it was a speed of Pado, and soon realized why people are so scared of these things. Yeah, they pack a punch. It also had a para friend, but that didn't really make a difference. There was no way I wasn't going to die from this. And throughout my whole journey as Koa, I would get to know speed of Pados quite well. I did put Aqua Affinity on my Koa to try and escape other Koas, and I figured it could be useful in this situation, but I was way too far away from the water to escape it now. So I just accepted my fate. Also, just a quick note, I'm playing on Official 2, so this is totally within the server's rules. Just pointing that out now so you guys know that this wasn't a rule break or anything. I also decided I needed a new place to get the blessings, because this was way too far away from the water, so I decided to find one on Tyrannodon. So, after finding a suitable location, I resurrected my Koa, and I spawned in Whirl Islands, which would at least be a good place to grow up. Once I felt I was large enough to get moving, though, I went onto an island to try to make my way over to the desert. In the desert was the area that I found most suitable to try and grow and constantly be able to get the blessing. At the time I didn't realize it, but I was actually going straight to the area I needed to go to. I was really just trying to get off of the island I was on, but at the end of the day it doesn't matter anyways, as you'll see in a bit. I decide I might as well stay on the island for a little while, since it does have water, food, and it's a pretty good place to go in case I get attacked, since the water is a good ally for me, and being on such a small island means that I should be able to see enemies coming from a mile away since they'll have to swim over. Or so I would have thought. As you can see right here, these acros just completely snuck up on me and I didn't see it at all. This was just me getting lazy, I guess. I don't even know. And at this point, they really just destroyed me. I think I hit it like once or twice here. I don't know how I'm even still alive at this point. Just keeping my face to it, hoping they won't be able to get to me. Luckily, I did at least seem to do decent damage to them, but clearly not enough, as now I'm down to half health, and they'll easily just outheal me. The other Acro decides to go in, and at this point, it's kinda over. Just like, you can see my health is just gone. I tried my best, but at this point, I mean, just look at my health, there's no chance. Considering I'm not even 1.2, I thought I did decent, but at this point, I was just scrambling back up to get in a good defensive position to try to at least maintain the health I still have. At this point, it was pretty much just a standoff. We both needed to heal off our bleed and get our health back. So what they were just going to do was have one sit over there and have the other try and keep me from sitting down. We played this game back and forth for a little while, but eventually the acro just decided it got tired of it and mesh bit and killed me. Luckily though, since this is one of the few things that's against the rules unofficial, I got my koa back. And remember that perfect area I was talking about earlier? Well, this is it. You can see the speed shrine right over there. 
So using the nearby power shrine, I was just constantly getting the blessing, constantly giving me an extra 50% growth. And I was constantly on my koa, staying through storms and everything to constantly get as much growth as I could. And sometimes I'd hear things like acros, but honestly I'm pretty confident that I could stand up to them, since at this point I was getting pretty big. So when I did hear stuff like that, I'd usually back myself up against the cliff and just get into an advantageous position in case they do attack. And I spent a while in the same area and had grown quite large, so I decided it was time for at least a small change of scenery. So I headed back to the Lurdu Island, made a new friend there, and just chilled out there for a little while. Proud of my accomplishments so far, I decided to one call, which as a solo player is something I really rarely do. Eventually though, I decided it was time to start heading back to my original home. So I crossed back over. Because of how hard it was to get meat on the island, it made me think a lot about my diet and how necessary meat actually was for it. So I decided to just eat a bunch of plants and see what would happen if I had a poor diet. Now, I saw that it said you'd be more likely to get sick, but what I didn't know is that you could just randomly get sick from actually having a poor diet. What I thought it meant was that things that would normally make you sick would make you sick even easier rather than you just randomly get sick. What I also didn't know was how much of a death sentence being sick was. Obviously, I haven't played this game in a year and a half, so all of this is new to me. I didn't realize that my food and water were dropping at an alarming rate, my stamina and ability power were barely regening, and everything around me could smell that I was sick, so there was basically a target on my back. And I know that you can eat charcoal to help get rid of the sickness, but of course the one time I actually need it is the one time I'm completely unable to find it. Now don't get me wrong, on its own a juviacro is no problem, but when you're starving to death at a rapid rate and you need all the food you can get and this thing's constantly following you around slowing you down, it's a problem. Eventually though, I did seem to be able to start feeding myself, and I was just heading towards the speed shrine because I thought I remembered there being charcoal there, when my nemesis approached. The speed Apato heard. As soon as I saw that glowing boy crest over the hill, I knew it was over for me. But I figured I should at least try to get as far as I can, and maybe if I get to the river, I might be able to swim away in time. However, I wasn't even able to get that far before their paracronies stopped me dead in my tracks. So I did the one thing I knew how to, and used the water to my advantage. Now, these paras were smart, or at least at the time it seemed like they were, so they weren't going to follow me into the water but the Apatos would definitely have no problem just backing up into me and whipping my tail, so I knew I had to get into that river. So, as soon as I got the chance, I left the oasis and ran into the river. However, the paras weren't just gonna leave me alone, so they followed me in, got cheeky little hits in, and then one decided, you know what, screw it, let me just face tank him, that won't go wrong at all. As tempting as it was to eat and get the food I really needed, I knew the Apatos were right behind, so I had to keep moving. Although, as I found out, they were even closer than I had anticipated, and yeah, there's no hope now. Well, it is what it is, and I actually definitely had a lot of fun playing Beast of Bermuda, and I've now learned the importance of having a healthy diet. So I guess in the future I won't make that mistake again, and I'll definitely play Koa in the future. Although my next Beast of Bermuda video will probably be Megalosaurus or Megaraptor. My next video in general, probably fossils and archaeology, because you guys really like those. You know, it's funny to think, my last Beast of Bermuda video, I think I had around 60 subscribers, and at this current moment I have 677 subscribers, so my channel has basically basically grown tenfold since then, so thank you guys so much for the support. But I had a lot of fun making this video. Right now it is currently 1.34am in the morning, but I enjoy editing these types of videos a lot too. They're a lot more fun to edit than Minecraft videos, which is why I don't mind staying up to do it. But I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing, and with all that out of the way, I hope that you enjoyed the video, and I hope that you have a good day.